Last week I showed off one of these smaller folding fat tire bikes. So this week I decided to change it up and go bigger. So this is the 1000 watt fat tire bike that is available from boltonebikes.com. And yeah, that's 1,000 watts. So that is the Bafang BBSHD 1,000 watt motor. That is a good amount of power. So currently, this is the most powerful bike that I offer. There are some 250, 350 watt models of different bikes. There's 500 watts, there's some 750s, and then there's kind of the big guns. Basically, if you want the most powerful, fastest bike that I have to offer. This is it. There's two different colors. There's this nice gray color, and there is also a blue. Like I said, 1,000 watts of power. You've got 26-inch fat tires. The bike comes just like you see it here. So it has the front suspension fork. It comes with these metal fenders, both front and rear, and it also comes with that rack that's installed on the back. Now this bike used to come with mechanical disc brakes early on and it didn't have a shift sensor so I'm happy to say that both of those things have changed. Now we have some good hydraulic disc brakes on here and then the shift sensor which if you don't know what that is I do have another video about that you can go check it out. But basically what that does is because you have a mid-drive motor essentially where the cranks or I should say the, the gear by the cranks because it doesn't actually turn the cranks. The cranks freewheel. So you don't have to pedal when the motor's turning. That's a question I get every once in a while. Basically, this gear is turning to the rear wheel. Now, because all of the power is going through your drivetrain, when you shift gears, that means you're shifting all of that power around. And under normal pedaling, you kind of let off a little, ease up when you shift into a different gear, something you just get used to and you feel for if you're used to riding a bicycle. When you've got all that power, that sensor, which is located right here, basically cuts the power to the motor for a brief second and it makes sure that you shift through the gears nice and smoothly. So effectively it's just protecting your drivetrain. So those are a couple of changes that have happened with this bike. Since it first came out, it does have a nice color display. It's very small, just kind of tucked in the corner, and I like that about it. It's a little, little more stealthy. Turn that on. Hello. And then that screen comes on. So a nice vivid color display. Now some of the other Bafang displays that mount in the middle that are bigger or do other things, those generally speaking are compatible. You just have to remove this guy and unplug it and plug in the new one. So it is compatible with other displays if for some reason you wanted something else. Of course, we've got the throttle here and you've got several levels of assist. This is actually programmable. So it says five right now. You can actually change that to nine. So if you want smaller increments of power, you can do that. Uh, this display shows how many watts. Over here, you've got the actual battery voltage up in the corner here and it gives you a rough kind of fuel gauge almost, if you will, in the corner. And then of course you got the usual miles per hour and those fun things. Uh, if you pull the brakes, you've got that little brake symbol right there. That cuts off power to the motor as well. And then there is a headlight that is battery operated off of the main bike battery on the front. That's the same headlight that you've seen on the step through in some of the other models. Now to the battery, because if you've got this much power, what are you using to feed it? So the bike comes stock with a 48 volt, 15, I think 0.6 amp hour. So about 15 and a half amp hour battery. But that's actually what not what is on here. This looks identical to the stock battery that comes on it. It's the same size, same shape. But the one that's on this demo bike I have right here, and when I say demo, that means if you want to come by Grass Valley, you can hop on this and take it for a spin. More on that later. But the battery on this demo bike is actually a 48 volt, 21 amp hour. 
So that's a 1000 watt hour battery that is an option for this bike. So if you really want more range, you can opt for the bigger battery. Now I said demo bike. Most of the bikes that I sell, I try and always keep a small fleet here in Grass Valley so that if you want to test ride one, you can call me up, email me, get in touch through our website and say, hey, I want to come by and here's a bike I want to test ride and we can have it charged up and ready to go for you so you can get a feel for what it's like. You may have noticed there's some branches. Why am I standing next to some branches cut down over there and over here? Well, it's because I was doing a little bit of exploratory research around the shop here because we are not in a shopping center area. We're in an area where you can ride bikes from, which I like. Now, we have a little bit of room here. So I've never told anybody really this, but you're hearing it now. Uh, I'm kind of have the start to the test track, yes, test track that goes around the building right there. So I'm gonna start clearing out branches and brush and go around the building up on that hill right up along here. Probably gonna have a couple of paths so you can actually go up and down and around and it'll go all the way around the building, around the whole property here and uh, probably loop around to about here. Because normally what happens is instead of riding on the property, which there's plenty of room to do, uh, people go out and go out on the road. And that's totally fine. Those that are comfortable with that can still do that. But if you want a quiet, private place to take a bike for a spin, you'll be able to do that. Here's that uphill up to the airport that I like to test out. Usually people go up here or they head down the road this way off to the left and it kind of goes into a quiet resi residential area. Uh, if you go far enough, there are some gravel fire roads you can get to. And then down this direction, uh, you can get down to some single track trails and really test these bikes out. So really excited about that. And that test track is like just, it's still in the idea stages. So don't expect to come here today and find that. You're of course welcome to come take bikes for test rides. Just be aware that the track on site is just getting started. And I'm mentioning it now because I think it'd be fun to kind of document the process and show you guys the features of the track and how it comes together as that happens. So right now, all I've got is a pine needle covered mess and a few branches cut down and trees in the way. But to come up here and uh, go along this fence line and come up around that hill around the corner and go around the property, it's, it's gonna be awesome. It just looks like a, a mess, because it is, but this is all gonna get cleared out and I'm really excited about that. If you have any questions about the bike, feel free to leave a comment below and I'm happy to get back to you and answer it. But basically we've got the 1000 watt that is a cadence sensor, not a torque sensor. That's another common question. That means that these pedals are detecting when you're pedaling, not how hard. I know the newer Bafang Ultra Motor does that. And some people have asked, why don't I have that motor on this bike? Truthfully, I have a bike in the shop hiding in there that does have that motor that's a little bit different from this one. So I can test it out. I have heard of some reliability issues here and there. And you can go look around and do some research for yourself if you wanna look into that. But basically, this motor has been really good. It's been very reliable. I haven't had problems with it. So for that reason, I like using it on my bikes. Just because there's something newer out there doesn't mean it's better yet. It could be, but I kinda like to wait and make sure things are ready for prime time and that they're the absolute best that I can offer before I sell them and I'm not 100% confident that that new motor is. How fast does a 1,000 watt bike really go? Well, there's only one way to find out about that. Hey everybody, I'm interrupting this nice, awesome bike ride outside because I wanna make sure you know about the Bolton E-Bikes podcast. It's another place where you can learn about electric bikes and get a different perspective because it's not just me that's on the podcast. There are other people, some of them are e-bike enthusiasts just like you. Some of them may be industry experts. Maybe they're experts on batteries or different things that go into electric bikes. But I'm really having an awesome time making those episodes for you, 
making sure you have awesome content about electric bikes. So make sure to go check that out at ebikepodcast.com. I will put a link in the description of this video so you can check it out. But if you just want to head straight there, remember it's ebikepodcast.com. So now back to the regularly scheduled program. So here we are, full power, up the hill, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 miles an hour, 17, we're still accelerating up the hill, 18, and we ran out of room. So no pedaling, just takes right off. If you want power, like I said, this is the bike for power. And now as I shift through the gears, because I want to go faster, then I can get more speed out of it. So if you want to go hot faster, you start shifting up. And now we're going uphill, so we don't want to be in the highest gear. Now, that also means that if you get a bike like this with a mid-drive and you say, oh, I want more torque or I want more speed than the way the bike comes, you don't have to mess around with batteries or motor controllers or any of that to get more out of it. You can actually change the gears. So you can change the sprocket up front, which for this particular motor, there are plenty available, or you can change the cassette in the back and get a different range out of it. All right, we're in sixth gear, maximum power, seventh gear, and I'm running, I'm still actually putting power in. We're at 38 miles an hour, 39, and 40. So I just got it over, hope you can hear me over the wind noise, 40 miles an hour with pedaling. Now I've stopped pedaling. We're going to let the motor do its thing. We're doing 34. Now we're getting to a little hill. 33. So depending on your tire pressure and rider weight and everything, you're going to get somewhere between 30 and 35 miles an hour unlocked. Now I know what some of you are thinking right about now. That's too fast. You are not allowed to go 35, 40 miles an hour on the road legally. Now I have a solution for that. This is a class two 750 watt, 20 mile per hour sticker. So all we gotta do is take this sticker and we're going to uh, we're gonna put it on uh, right there. There we go, problem solved. Okay, I'm just, I'm kidding a little bit, of course. So let's put, let's put the screen, let's put the display onto the screen here. That was unlocked. The bike doesn't come that way. So when you turn the screen on, you've got a mode, there's a power button right here and there's a mode button right there. They're underneath, so in case you're wondering what I'm pressing, now we have uh, settings here. We can change from imperial to metric. We can change the screen brightness, auto off. So if you just leave the, the screen on, it'll turn itself off after a little while. The battery voltage uh, indication. So you can actually have a percentage or a voltage. I prefer the voltage. More. Now it asks for a password. Well, who knows what that password might be. Okay, so you enter in the password. Now it says wheel size, 28 inches. That's the outer diameter. So I find that's getting the most accurate speed reading on this bike. Speed, oh, we don't wanna change that. Speed limit. You can see it's set to 99 kilometers per hour. Effectively, the speed limit is not set. So we can turn that down and we can set it to basically 20 miles per hour. 20 miles an hour is the speed limit for a class two bike. Now, there's no one that says, or there's no law that says 
a 750 watt motor is measured by the peak output or the maximum output or the nominal or the average output, what it's rated for. There's a little bit of a gray area, so look up your local laws, check it out. Be safe, don't do dumb things. If you want this to be a 750 watt, 20 mile an hour limited bike, then set the speed limit and ride it accordingly and I think you're gonna be just fine. Now, if you want one of these stickers, I will, by the time this video comes out, I'll make sure to put them online. I actually have them on the shelf, they're all ready to go. I have class one, 250 watt, 500 watt, 750 watt stickers. Class two, 250, 500, uh, and so on. And then also class three stickers. So if you have an e-bike that doesn't have a sticker, and you wanna make sure that you're clear to go ride on trails that are, say, for a class one bike. That was loud. Well, I actually have stickers available just like that one that you can put on your bike. Make sure that you have it tuned properly or set properly for the class of the sticker you're putting on there and you're good to go. And when I get back to the shop, I'll show you, I actually have a class four sticker. Class four doesn't exist, but I thought it'd be funny. So I made one. I'll show it to you in a little bit. All right. Crank up the power. Here we go. Let's take a turn. Whenever you go ride an e-bike, you don't take the shortest way, you take the little detour for fun. Hydraulic brakes so we can stop. Take that turn. Hear those tires hum. I love that sound. So we're going up a pretty good hill right now at 28 miles an hour. <coughs> Too much fun. And now we're coming up to a stop sign. So what do we do? We shift down and we stop. Now we've got lots of torque to take off. Let's go. And then we'll come onto the property. And we'll go right into the uh, Bolton E-Bikes Trail. And that's where it stops. Because it doesn't exist yet. Now I said I had class four stickers. So let me show you what those look like. Now like I said, class four doesn't exist. I think one day there will be a class four e-bike. Maybe it won't be called that, but there will be something because there is this point where e-bikes can be so much more powerful than they are. And there's nothing in between that and kind of a moped, which these really aren't. And then and a moped in California, at least is limited to 30 miles an hour. Well, clearly this even can do more than that. Now, if you go beyond that, basically you start getting into motorcycles, but you can't register a high, power, a high powered bicycle as a motorcycle. There just really isn't an avenue to do that with current regulations. So I think a class four e-bike is going to eventually be allowed and it's, it's going to come up. It's something that still looks like a bicycle. It's light like a bicycle. Maybe it has pedals, maybe it doesn't but effectively it can ride on the road at higher speeds, but it's still not a motorcycle. At least I hope that that happens. Now, so here's the class four sticker I've created. If you watch Back to the Future, if you'll get it. If you don't, well, you should have. <laughs> so there it is, class four. Instead of uh, 750 watts, we put 1.21 gigawatts and maximum speed 88 miles per hour. So these will be available to buy along with the others if you just wanna be funny and put something cool on your bike. Now, I don't think I mentioned what the cost of this 1,000 watt bike was. Uh, currently, it's 
on the website for $23.99. So $2,400. At the moment, that is the most expensive bike that I offer, but it's a really good bike for the price. It will blow away most bikes anywhere close to this price range on power. There are some other brands out there that have bikes that look very similar to this, that have the same motor, the same or even smaller batteries, hydraulic brakes, and they're selling them for prices in the four to $5,000 range. And I'll just tell you, the only difference between this bike and those typically is the price. That's it. They're underneath, they're, they're basically the same thing. You've got the same types of components and things that are putting those bikes together as this one. I just wanna sell it to you at a better price. So that is a little bit of information for you on the 1000 watt model and a little bit about what's going on here at Bolton E-Bikes. We are remodeling, rearranging, moving things around the shop, but don't be afraid to come on by Grass Valley and take one of these for a test ride. It's a lot of fun and you should definitely do it. Now make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit like if you like this video. I hope to see you again on another video very soon. These come out every single Thursday. I'm trying to make sure I'm very consistent in 2020 and make sure you get all of the best information you can get about electric bikes. Thanks again. I will see you next time.